Hello everyone, welcome to part one of home metal working, which is repoussé work. Uh, now metal comes in many different forms and you will probably have some of it around the house without even really thinking about it. So what we're going to use today is kitchen foil, which these days is made from aluminium. Once upon a time it used to get called tin foil because it's made from tin but they decided that wasn't so good for us. So it's now made from aluminium and it's very, very thin metal, but we can still have some fun with it. So you're going to start by having a piece of card. Now this piece I've got here is from part of a cereal packet and I've just cut out a piece that's about 20 centimeters by 15 centimeters. So something around that size, maybe slightly bigger if you want, but not too big uh, because you don't want too big an area to have to do the detailing, which is coming later. So once you've got your piece of card using a pencil, you're then going to draw a design on here. Now I would keep the design itself relatively simple because the glue that we're going to put on uh, needs to have space basically and then once that's done and we fill in some details then you can add some textures and things so the original drawing itself quite basic so I'm going to go with a fish theme uh, so on here I'm just going to draw a couple of fish Okay, so those are the fish that I've drawn. As I've said, you can see they're quite a basic design. And some bubbles coming out of their mouths. Um, and if you want to, if you've got some extra space in these corners or something, you might just want to add a little sort of framing idea. So let's have a look. I might put some wiggly lines to be a bit like seaweed. I'll have some coming out from each corner. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it at that. So just got the fish. They've got an eye, they've got their tails, they've got their bubbles. And you can see all this area here is left plain because the detail is going to come in later. So once you've drawn that, next we're going to go on to drawing that outline with glue. So I'll show you how to do that now. So for this section, what you'll need is your drawing that you've done on the card, some PVA glue and a brush. But we're not going to use the brush quite how you might imagine because we're not using the brush part. What we're going to use is the other end. So if you've got a brush with quite a fine handle to it, that's what you're after. Now the reason we're going to do this is because if you get the nozzle from your glue and just draw straight onto the card, it's quite hard to get a really defined line. You get little bubbles come out, you get little blobs and fat bits and thin bits. And that's not really what we want. We want something that's a bit more even all the way around the line. So I find the best thing to do, get another little piece of card that's had from a cereal box on it. So just a scrap of card, squeeze a bit of glue onto there, and then put that to one side. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to dip the tip of your handle into that glue and use that to draw with by just very delicately building up the glue along the line like this. Get up so you can see a bit. Okay. 
Now it takes a little while, but it's worth doing because when it comes to the later parts of making this work, you'll get a much nicer finish than the other parts that we do. So you can see the difference there, I think. Just finish this line, I'll show you. You can see the difference between the two lines. This one, nice and even. This one, running off the page and skinny bits there and things. Now you could draw that line and then use some of the bits to bring it back and things like that. But in all honesty, you just aren't gonna get as nice a line as if you do it this way. So if you've got the patience, that's the way to do it. And if you've gone round and then there's any little bits that you feel just need topping up, you can just dip your brush in and just add a little bit more onto that line so it's all built up really nice and neat. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one now to show you. Okay, so I've done one fish there. Obviously you're gonna do all of yours. Once you've done this uh, section, this, uh, lost my words. Once you've done this part of drawing the glue lines, what you're then going to need to do, having done all of it, is leave it to dry for 24 hours. So you can do this craft in sections. So maybe you do half an hour the first day, come back and do half an hour the second day or an hour, which however long it takes you, and that's fine. What you can do is after a few hours when this is started to dry, and remember the glue will go clear because it's PVA glue, but if you see that any sections are looking particularly thin, you can always just top up a little area that's looking too thin before you go to bed and then you should have a nice even line all the way around. So as I say you need a bit of patience, it's going to take a little bit of time but it'll be worth it in the long run. So once you've done those sections all that you've drawn the lines for. You put it to one side to leave it to dry, check for any thin lines a couple of hours later, and then just leave it overnight and go and do something else. Go and have a walk, go and have some fun, and have a sleep, and then come and find it in the morning. So here we are the next morning then, and you should have your piece of card with your glue outline done on it. And you can see it's shining there, but it's gone clear like PVA does. Okay, and that's all completely dry. But where the glue is, it's a very slightly raised surface. And that's what's gonna make the pattern in our aluminium, what we've got here. So I've cut out a piece of kitchen foil and I've done it big enough there to be a decent sized border all the way around the edge. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to cover this side with the pattern on in glue. We're going to stick that down. Um, and the, the foil has two sides. So it has a slightly matte side and a slightly shiny side. Now, I quite like using the matte side on what we're making. So I'm gonna glue my card to the shiny side. Um, so we're gonna stick it down there, make sure this is completely covered in glue, but not so much that it's squidging around, just a nice even layer. Stick it down on there, and then we're also going to turn these edges in and stick them down on the back of the card. So it's gonna end up a bit like this one where it's on the front and then it's just got an area stuck down around the back and that's all nice and firmly stuck down. So, we can start by on the side with the pattern. Okay, on the side with the pattern we're going to put some glue. So I've got my PVA glue. It needs to be PVA glue. Um, I did try with a glue stick and it didn't, it wasn't sticky enough to keep it stuck down. So. We're going to squidge some all around there. Now it's better to put too little and add some more afterwards than to put too much and then having to try and scrape some off. So just put some all over and now I'm just going to use a thickish brush. We've got one to just spread that all over and it's going to look a bit funny because it's going to be white and it's going to cover up our glue pattern but that's okay because we're going to stick the foil on top anyway and you won't see the foil pat the glue pattern as such until we do the next stage Okay, so I've spread my glue all over, but it's particularly important to make sure there's glue up to your glue pattern lines. So with your brush, just pay particular attention to those areas. Make sure there's glue right up to those lines. Doing your brush in a circular motion is quite good. Uh, because it gets the glue right in there up to the edges. If you stroke against the glue line, you're going to get it up to one side maybe, but not the other. So doing it around in a circle seems to work really well at ensuring that it's all around those lines. So just make sure all my lines have got glue over them. Maybe there, and then also I'm just going to make sure there's glue right up to the edge of my card. I've actually got a little bit there where I'm not quite gone to the edge, so I'm just going to squidge a tiny little bit of glue on there. Right around. It's quite hard because you've got to hold it. <laughs> That edge, so much that edge doesn't matter that it's going on my foil because I'm going to stick this down on the foil anyway. So, there we are, it's completely covered in glue and it's all gone right up to the glue drawing that we've done. So, remember face down onto the shiny side or you can do it on the other side if you want to stick it down now the card may set, start to curl a little bit and that's just because of the slight dampness of the glue but you can sort that out over time so i'm just pressing down really firmly 
making sure it's stuck down all over, right up to the edges and things. Okay, so now we've got that stuff in the middle. We need to stick our edges down. So, again, just going to squidge some around here. And some around here. I'm using my brush. Just to make sure I've got all my edges. You do have to be a bit gentle because although it's metal, it's very, very thin metal, and so it can tear. If you do get a tear, then you can either try and take your foil off again if it's you've only recently stuck it, or you can probably just do a little repair and it will all come out absolutely fine. So stop that one down. I'm just going to start, stick my other sides down now. Make sure you get it nice and snug along those edges. So I've stuck that down and I'm just going to use this part of my hand because it's a nice, it's a larger area than your fingertips and you can just press and smooth across and that helps to make sure that all the glue is sticking in all the right places and sticking our foil nicely down to our card and at that stage you just about see the fishes starting to come through but there's more we can do with it so having now stuck our foil to our cardboard um, what we're going to do now is help to define these lines and as we're doing this, the glue's having a chance to just try a little bit in there and really bond those two together. Now, what I like to use next, if you've got one, well, mum and dad have got one, somebody, is a cork from a wine bottle. Now, it really needs to be an actual cork one rather than a plastic one. And what we're gonna do with this is use it like a mini rolling pin. So we're just gonna put it under our fingers and we're gonna roll all over a piece of card. Now, the reason I like the cork rather than such as a prick stick or a glass is because the cork has just a tiny bit of springiness in it. So, it helps to get into all those little areas. But if you don't have a cork, but you do have a round bottle of PVA glue that you've been using, make sure the top's closed, obviously. And then actually, because that's got a bit of give as well, 
That also makes quite a good rolling pin for this. So you can really put some pressure on, roll up and down. Now, I've made a mistake there because look, I've moved to the edge where this rim is and it's made a bit of a line across there. But I think if I just smooth it out, it's not gonna matter too much. So just be careful of any edges that are sharp. I'll go back to that, that I'm gonna go back to my cork. So I'm just gonna roll over the whole area. Quite good fun this bit. So you can see it's starting to get a little bit more defined, but now we're going to do the next part as well, which really, really helps. So for this, ideally what you need is a pencil with a rubber on the end. Mine's looking a bit grubby because I've been doing some of this. So it started off with a white rubber, but because I've been rubbing it against the foil, come black at the end. Now the reason this is so great is because again it's got a little bit of spring to it, it's quite a small surface area and you can really use this to rub around these lines without, because it's soft it won't tear the foil but it will also get into all the little areas that we need to really press up against around his eye there to start really defining the areas a bit more you can see if I just do the other side of that arc there as well and you can really see how much more it starts to define our picture so hopefully you've got a pencil with a rubber if you haven't got a pencil with a rubber you can use your fingertip and you can still, because obviously your fingertips are a bit springy and it's quite small, and you can still get in there and get a quite well defined line. So if I show you a line that I've done with my fingertip, so this is the line that I did with the rubber on the pencil, and this is the line that I did with my fingertip. So you can see it doesn't work quite so well. Um, you could possibly use the end of a brush as well. So this is the bigger brush that I used, but you need to check that it hasn't got anything sharp on the end. Um, because if it has, it will potentially rip your foil. So you can see, I'm managing to get that in there quite well. But as I say, ideally, if you've got a pencil with a rubber on the end, that's perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna to get to work on outlining my piece. If your card is starting to bend a bit, just give it a little bit of a bend the other way and that'll be fine. So I'm just gonna press on with this. So there we are. I've now gone all the way round on both sides of each glue line and especially around the eyes and the bubbles and things to really make them start to stand out. If I do this, you can start to see how they become a bit more greedy. And don't worry if your rubber is making some lines on the foil. It's all going to get covered up anyway. So 
that's how it's going to look. And you work around every part of it with the rubber and your pencil. Okay. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is use a pencil. Um, the thing you need to make sure of is that the lead of your pencil is not too sharp. So you don't want it to a really sharp point. If yours has got a sharp point, then just get some paper or card, do a little bit of scribbling, roll it around a bit to make sure you've got a blunter finish and no really sharp bits on it. Because what we're gonna do is like we went round with the rubber on the pencil, we're now gonna go around with the, the tip of the pencil. But we need to be quite gentle because although our foil stuck down, it's still very thin and we don't want to tear it. So just very carefully, we're going to start to push into those edges and push up against our glue line. So if I do the other side of that one as well. And again, it doesn't matter if your pencil makes an actual mark because we are going to do more to it anyway. So, hopefully you can see there. So this one here has been done with just the rubber. This one here is even more defined because it's been done with the blunt pencil. Uh, I'm just going to go all the way around, so you want to go all the way around the outside of your fish, all the way around the inside. When it comes to the eyes, you need to go around, and again with the bubbles and things to go around. And I'd say there and there to be really careful not to, you know, uh, just don't try to rush that because you might tear it. Okay. If you do end up tearing a bit of foil, don't be tempted to rip it off. If it, when it tears, it often will sort of um, concertina up into a little tear. And just stop, gently flatten it out again from the tear. Put a little bit of glue on and gently smooth it back down as best you can, making sure it's covering the area. If it's not covering the area, if it's come right off, then you can look at getting a tiny piece of foil the same size as the hole you've made, gluing that down and very gently smoothing it over. It probably will end up showing, but with the patterns and things we're going to make anyway, it won't show too much. So don't worry if it happens, uh, you can make amends. Okay, so I'm now going to go around the rest of my fish with my blunt pencil. Okay, so now I've gone all the way around with the pencil tip as well. If you've got any areas that you think, hmm, not quite looking, liking how that's looking, you might want to come back to the rubber and just, you know, blend that in a bit as well around the edges. But we're actually gonna, the next section we're gonna do, next part we're gonna do, is adding to those areas anyway. And I think for me, particularly around my bubbles, I just smooth out again with the rubber. 
Okay. Okay. And again, because you're using a pencil that's a little bit blunt, you hopefully are not going to tear. The foil, and it's stuck down so you can like to build up scales on this fish. And might do some patterns on their tails as well. So I'm just gonna finish drawing my patterns on there. You can see that this area now and the tail, got some patterns on. I'm going to leave the heads just as they are. But what I'm now going to do, all around the outside, I'm going to use the tip of my pencil and I'm going to make the dabbing marks. I'll show you how I've done it on this one. Any one. And it just adds definition to the areas where we've got glue and when we do the last part of putting the polish on all the little dots that we've made that are little tiny indentations will pick up the polish and make a really nice metal looking surface that's looking a bit weather-worn metal rather than shiny aluminium foil okay so again it will take a little bit of time but it'd be worth it you can you can do them more spread out if you want to you can do them in little swirls and patterns and things or you can just do it all over it it can be nice and random it doesn't have to be neat patterns or anything so i'm going to fill my areas in now
So, I can't guarantee you won't get arm ache or hand ache, and it will take a little while, but you can always stop, have a break, and come back and carry on. I think you can see there, I've done the little dot marks over all the areas that aren't my fish or bubbles or these little flourishes that I've put in the two corners. Okay, and that's going to really help make it look more like old metal when we've done the next handbar piece. So, here we've got the one that I've just done with you and prepared. So it's still looking very shiny. And here we've got one that I did before. So I'll bring it in a bit. You can perhaps start to see some of the black that's just making it look a bit more like old metal. And it brings out some of the details as well. So now I'm going to show you how to do that part as well. Okay, so this is where, ideally, what you'll need is some black solid shoe polish. It may work with a cream shoe polish, in all honesty, I've never tried it. So I've got old fashioned boot polish. And I've got a brush to put it on with and a little bit of scrap this cotton cloth to rub it in with and sort of take off any excess. Now if you don't have any boot polish or shoe polish, there are also options to use a Sharpie or a permanent marker. Uh, black tends to work kind of the best. Um, so if I show you what I've done with did this one with black and red and you can see it comes out much darker than the shoe polish but it probably depends how quickly you take it off again um, and then this is one that I've done with yellow and black so a little bit of a gold effect there I personally like the shoe polish effect it looks more realistic so uh, we will have a go at that so if you've got a brush, then you're just gonna dab it into your block polish and make sure you've got the surface covered when you do this. Otherwise, adults in your house will not be pleased, okay? And we're just gonna take a bit on our brush and we're just gonna start to rub it over the surface, like, okay. And as we start to rub it in, you can see it starts to look very dull indeed at first. If you don't have a brush, then just get your bit of cloth. Put some polish on there and again, you can just rub it on. I quite like the effect that the brush has in getting it into all the little holes and things so I'm going to use the brush. Um, you could potentially use a paint brush to do it if you had one that was quite a, quite a, a round one with quite a, a sharp flat end so that it was stubby a bit like these bristles are rather than a smooth brush. So, okay so I'm just going to put polish all over my tin fish.
once you've put it all over, I would put it to one side, go make another cup of tea, and let it dry for about 10-15 minutes, a bit like if you're polishing your shoes. I was always taught that you put the polish on, you leave it for 10 minutes, and then you buff it off, shine them up. So we're going to put that to one side. While I do that, my surface a little bit, made it a little bit messy. And I will just show you how to do it with a Sharpie pen. So this is one that I made earlier. It's got the Beck, short for Becky. And a little flower at the end there. And again, I've done all the little dots and things. Now, in this instance, instead of my cloth, I'm using a little bit of kitchen roll. Just sort of screwed up. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it in sections because you don't want to leave the pen on too long because it will just stay dark and stay on because it's a permanent marker. So I'm going to start by doing this edge. I'm going to put the pen around this edge. Side here. That's my name. You don't even need to put it all filled in. And then really only sort of 10, maybe 15 seconds after you've put it on, you're going to start to rub it off again. Yeah, really only want 10 seconds on there probably. Otherwise it's going to stay really dark. I'm just going to put it on the surface so I can press. So I'm just going to press a little bit to rub a bit more of it off when I was doing with it up in the air. I probably left that a little bit too long actually, so 5 to 10 seconds. But you can press a bit harder and get some of it off. I like it when not too much of it stays on. So you can see it's starting to pick up the dots and in this instance rather than the black of the shoe polish filling all those little dots the marker pen stays on the surface and what you get left with is the little dots are the little shiny areas because they don't pick up the pen so let's just uh a little bit more so you can colour quite roughly because what you're doing is putting it on the surface I'm going to give it a blow one two three four five and then I'm going to start to rub it off again I think that's the answer is to use cat fly and then start to rub it off again Here. Oops. You can even you don't even have to wait for five actually. Depends how dark you want it to be. Sometimes you might want it quite dark. I personally prefer it not too dark because I think it looks less realistic like metal if it's too dark. Um, I don't think it matters too much if the darkness is varied because 
metal is quite often varied in how it ages and things anyway. Mm -hmm. Warm a little bit under there. I'm going to do it over the lines as well just because I like when it dulls them down just a little bit and as we're rubbing it into the background it kind of comes off the name again. I've got to confess I've not done a great job really. Oh. See how it looks. Okay, it's not too bad. You can see it's quite an interesting effect. I actually do quite like how the little pitted holes stand out like little stars. So that's an interesting thought. Maybe you could do a metal work piece that's a bit like fireworks or something like that or a night sky with the moon and that way you could make these little stars in a black sky so that's how you can do it with a marker pen like I say different color markers come out differently and you can see that I left the black on this one for quite a long time so it's really quite black. Again, it's quite nice. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the one that we put the shoe polish on. And the last bit that I'm gonna do is to get my cloth. And I'm sort of folding it, fold it in half, and then I've tucked the finger in, wrapping it round my finger. And then over the pad, so I'm making like a pad area with my pointy finger, okay? And then I'm going to start in one corner and I'm just going to gently rub over what we'd already put on. And all we're doing really is taking off a little bit of what's probably excess polish on the surface. You don't want to rub too hard because we want the majority of the polish to stay. But there might be some areas that you think, oh, I'd like, I'd like that to show up a bit more. So for me, it might be the bubbles show up a bit more. On. As you're doing this as well, any holes that didn't pick up the polish will definitely do so as you do this because you're sort of gently pushing it around any that doesn't come off in the cloth. So you can see that was well, not a clean cloth but it didn't have polish on when I started. So I've taken quite a lot off again. Um, I think the finish is really rather nice. So the pousse work is about raising the surface. On a pewter, you would normally heat the metal and push into the metal to make these indents. And you would fill those indents before turning the metal over and mounting it on something else. So we're kind of doing it in reverse. We are putting the raised area onto our card and pushing the thin metal of the aluminium foil onto that raised area. And then we can make those patterns and then use the polish to pick them up. I don't know about you, but I think that's really nice. 
and I guess your finishing touch is to decide what to do with it. You could perhaps mount it on a, a nice black piece of card or something, or maybe put it in a picture frame, or you might decide that you want to put it on the front of a notepad, or you could put some magnets on the back and make it stick on the fridge. Um, the ideas are endless really. You could probably even, if you cover this back area, either with some sellotape, sticky back plastic, or more foil to try and make it a bit waterproof, then you could probably put it outside for quite a while, maybe out in the garden or something. Anyway, I really hope you like doing this work. And so this is metal working at home part one. You'll have to wait to see what metal working at home part two brings. Okay, have fun, stay creative, and stay safe. I want you to get together. I want you to get together. I want you to get together. Put your hands together. I want you to get together. I want you to get together.